Say hello to the Triumph Street Twin, a classically styled naked roadster. But don't be fooled, underneath that lovely retro exterior is a really modern bike with all the modern day rider aids. Continuing with its looks, I absolutely love this. Everything is well proportioned, everything looks like it should be there and isn't out of place, and there's lots of really cool details that make all the difference. It has things like those red spark plug covers, like the old bikes used to have, the finned down pipes, it's aluminium throttle body covers, it really is a good looking bike. The Street Twin has a 900cc engine, so you think it's going to be quite hefty, but actually it's pretty light and small. I had it parked next to a friend's Honda CB125F, and they were about the same length, and about the same height too. The seat's really big, really comfy, and really good quality. It has that really nice sort of classic stitching, and of course that classic embossed Triumph name on the back of it. The riding position itself is comfortable too. It's fairly upright and even though my knees were at quite an angle because I'm six foot tall, they tucked up perfectly into the cutouts of that shaped tank. This not only helps you grip the tank, but it also acts as a wind protection for your legs. The mirrors work really well, especially for round ones which I thought might be quite small, but they did really good visibility and they stick out quite far so you can see past your shoulders and there's no shake or sort of vibration through them. As you'd expect for any naked bike, there's not really any wind or weather protection, but the air coming off the front of the bike is still pretty clean. You can buy aftermarket fly screens though, which would provide a bit more protection. That's probably something that I would do because I'm used to having protection on my bike. When it comes to the switchgear and dashboard, everything is really simple, easy and obvious to use. It has the classic looking analog speedo, but it also has an LCD screen in this. This screen includes loads of information, so it has things like your odometer, your fuel gauge, time, two trip meters, and it even has things like your instant average miles per gallon and things like your miles left until your fuel's empty. So although it looks all classic and old school, it's got all those mod cons too. Again, the throttle, that's ride by wire rather than the cable, and I found that to be really responsive. The clutch was extremely light, it's a slipper clutch, and really easy to use. The bike also includes ABS because of Euro 4 compliance, and it has traction control too, but that is switchable so you can switch it off. Um, there's even a USB port under the seat so you can keep your phone or other technology charged up, or if you're using your phone for sat nav, you could have that plugged in all the time so it doesn't kill your battery. Now to the engine and ride. When I looked at the specs, I was surprised that for a 900cc engine, it only had 54 brake horsepower, which sounded quite low. However, the 900cc water-cooled engine feels great. It may not be high revving, because it's only got a 7,000 rev limit, but it has loads of torque, so it still feels plenty quick enough, and much more than those figures would suggest. It's also really smooth, but the best thing about it, I thought, was the noise. The actual bike I was riding had the optional Vance and Heinz exhaust. Still has one each side, not a two into one. A really low rumble at low revs, but then when revved, it sounds fantastic and pretty loud, but without being ridiculous and social. So who do I think this bike's aimed at? I really think it has a huge range. From someone who just wants a nice looking, nice riding, a nice sounding standard bike, to someone who wants to create their own custom bike. So Triumph themselves have sort of jumped on this custom bandwagon and there's over 150 accessories and bolts and replacement parts. So if you want to have sort of a brown seat and grips, you can change all those. And everything just sort of bolts on and off. The bike felt completely at home on both A and B roads. And because it's quite small, I think it could be used as sort of a posh commuter. I do think I'd stick to summer though because of the lack of weather protection 
and I wouldn't want that bike to be sort of left out in the rain all day if I was parking in an office. If you put some soft panniers on it or even just a roll top bag on the rear because it's got that big seat, I even think it'd be good to do some touring. So long weekends, I think it'd be fine. You probably wouldn't want to travel from the UK to Spain for a two week tour, but I think a long weekend in Scotland, something like that would certainly be doable. So as I'm singing its praises so much, I can hear you already asking, so how much is it? So for everything I think this bike's suited to, I actually think it's quite reasonable for a brand new bike of this quality. It's £7,800 on the road. Now for my usual positives and negatives. So the three things that I like best about this bike are number one, the engine and the noise that engine makes, especially with those Vance and Heinz pipes. Number two, how easy it is to ride and it's handling. It really is a nice riding bike. And number three is its build quality. Everything is really well put together and is decent quality. And for the negatives, I found it to be a little bit windy, but then again, it's a naked bike, so that's what you sort of expect. Um, one niggly thing I found after I refuelled is that it didn't register this fuel for a couple of minutes. So it actually had me worried and I thought I might have just poured petrol everywhere. And finally, I think if it revved a bit more to give more top end power, it would be an even better bike. I do think that Triumph may have done this on purpose to avoid it getting too close to the 1200 version. And there are things out there online that suggest that's the same and it's been limited with a cam. Um, there is a company called Tech in England that will change that cam and that gives it quite a bit more power. So in summary, I really enjoyed having a street twin for a day and was quite sad to give it back. It is a bike that I would look to own if I wanted that style of bike. If you're looking for a really nice looking modern retro roadster that's easy and fun to ride and is fairly sensibly priced, then the Triumph Street Twin is a real winner in my opinion. I'd be happy to have one in my own garage. Finally, I'd just like to say a huge thanks to the Triumph dealer who were kind enough to loan me the Street Twin for the day. This is A1 Moto Services in York. They seem to have just about every make and model of Triumph there is, so it's worth a visit if you're in the area. They even have a proper biker's cafe there, so it's worth a visit there just as a stop off. And you can find out more about A1 by going to a1moto.com and I'll include that link in the description. Do leave some feedback in the comments and I'll see you for the next review next Friday.